Hey everyone, it's Warriors uh, NRL Fanatics here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. And uh, joining me tonight is um, NRL content creator and a big Manly Seagulls tragic fan. It is Pro Enzo Vids. We've had him on the channel before and it's great to have him on again for another preview. And uh, yeah, looking forward to this game coming up this week between uh, the Warriors, one is and Warriors taking on the Manly Ringer Seagulls um, at Go Media Mount Smart Stadium in Auckland, New Zealand. On Saturday afternoon here in Australia, so it'll be just Saturday evening in Auckland, New Zealand. There, but um, Proenzo Vids, it's great to have you on the channel again. Um, it's a it's a real honour to have you on, and um, yeah, hope you're doing well. Yeah, no, thanks for that. thanks, bro. Um, good to be back on your channel again. Um, I remember our preview last year when we only played the Warriors last year. That you know, was fun too. So no, good to be back on, and um, yeah, keen to see what's in store for tonight. You know, big game this weekend. So. Yeah, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, looking forward to it. And hello to everyone in the chat. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, before getting into it, make sure you like the live stream as well, guys. Click the thumbs up button. And don't forget, if you're a new viewer to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. It's all really much appreciated. We've got Jose in the chat here. What's up, brother? How was your trip? It was a great trip to New Zealand. I really enjoyed my time over there and seeing family and friends and, you know, catching up with some of the Warriors fans and going to the game as well at Newcastle, Newcastle Knights says. Gave me the amount of stuff. It was an awesome time. I really enjoyed my time there in New Zealand. But yeah, it was a great trip. Jose, what's what's up, Proenzo Vids? We got Mel here. How's it going, Mel? Hope you're doing well. We got Michael as well. Hello to Michael in the chat as well. So yeah, why don't we get into it? So first things first, before we get into the actual game, we're going to ask um, Proenzo a few questions on how the off season went for the Seagulls. So looking at what happened last year, obviously Manly missing out on the finals and going into this year. Um, they had a few inclusions. Um, they signed Luke Brooks in the off season um, as well. So, what what were your thoughts on the off season? How was your off season, the Seagulls? How how was it for for you guys? Any um, massive losses for you guys um, in the off season in terms of um, players leaving? And um, Luke Brooks is obviously the big um, signing um, mm. from the Tigers there. And um, you know, I know there's a lot of people questioning whether that is a good sign or not, but yeah. I thought Luke Brooks going to Manly was a good move. Um, you know, get away uh, from a club that, you know, he really struggled with. Um, lots of pressure on him and, uh, yeah, coming to the Seagulls and playing alongside Cherry Evans, I thought that was, um, you know, a good move by the Manly Seagulls. And, um, yeah, what were your thoughts on the off-season for you guys? Um yeah, look, I think it was actually a pretty good off-season, actually. I know there's been a few new changes to the squad. Like, we've obviously brought in a lot of experience, too. Um, Nathan Brown's been a great pickup as well as Brooks as well. Like, Brooks has obviously been the best signing so far this year. But I think Nathan Brown and his impact has been a big difference to Manly's forwards, forwards this year. Because mm -hmm. Brown's got guys like Pasekta running hard, Sidney running hard. Aloye's playing great footy so far, too. So, I think Brown's influence has really rubbed off on the rest of the forward pack. Um, yeah, Brooks has been a great pickup. I mean, I'll... Yeah, I guess I was one of those people that questioned the signing at first, but as time went on, I knew that yeah. him and Cherry Evans together would combine really well and um, turn about the back, calling the shots. So uh, no pressure on Brooksy. You know, it's fantastic seeing him playing well. Um, and yeah, look, we've signed some outside backs too. Jackson Pulo and uh, Tommy Talao both have been good so far. Uh, Waddell came back to Manly. Um, and yeah, look, we've obviously lost a couple of players soon into last year from to like Kelm Talangi, Morgan Harper, the Finery boys, etc. But I think overall, the, the club's making some good moves. Um, we seem to be looking all right in terms of depth and all that. Uh, probably the most depth we've had in, in a long time as well. So um, yeah, I, I like to think that we are on the up in terms of um, the squad and, and how the team are looking uh, so far this year because it's been a not a bad start to the year so far. So hope we keep it up. Yeah, yeah, and uh, just uh, looking at um, so far the season, uh, you guys, um, and how you guys have been going. How do you rate your start to the season so far? We're only a couple rounds in, um, early days, but how do you re rate your start so far? You've had some good results. Obviously, that Penrith game last week was a massive uh, win for you guys um, after the disappointment of that loss to the Dragons, which I was really surprised by that you guys um, um, went down yeah. to those guys there, but... um. Yeah, what what are your thoughts generally on, on the start so far this season? Um, this for you is there a lot of expectation on, on the boys this year? Being that um, you didn't make the finals this year, and um, oh, last year you you guys would want to be making the finals this year. So yeah, what what are your thoughts on on the season start so far? Look, it's been an alright start. I think three and two is yeah. not a bad start to the season. 
Um, I do think, though, that those losses to both Parramatta and Dragons were a bit uh, unfortunate. I think the Parramatta game, we were unlucky to lose that one, personally. But mm. like, to blow a 14-point, like, 14 year lead, either way, is a bit embarrassing, I think. Um, and then that Dragons game was just, I think, purely just we didn't play well. I think we didn't turn up. I think Dragons played well, but we didn't play well ourselves. I think the occasion just sort of just didn't get to us, I guess. And, um, yeah. Um, if, Tur- if Turbo makes about five errors in one game, you know me and I are going to win, uh, I think. So, yeah, it was just one of those things, unfortunately. But other than that, we've had some good wins, as you said. Uh, we beat Rabbitohs around one Vegas, which was a big win for us. Uh, then we beat the Roosters the week after at Rookie, which was a really physical, dominant win. And then beating Penrith last week was probably our best game of all season so far. So, you know, I like to think that we can do the same away from Brookvale Oval and play the same intensity away from home. But so far, so good. I'm, I'm actually liking our start so far. Yep. Yeah. And uh, just for those of you who are joining and wondering where Paddy G is, unfortunately, um, we were supposed to have two guests on the channel tonight, supposed to have Pro Enzo Vids and Paddy G. But Paddy, unfortunately, couldn't come on because um, he isn't well. He's feeling sick. So he um, was a bit disappointed that he coun't come on tonight. So, um, yeah, well, no. No worries, uh, Paddy G. Hope you do um, get better soon. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get you on the channel soon. So just a reminder for those of you who are, who are coming on and, and looking for um, Paddy as well, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight on the show. But just going through the comments here, just want to read the comments here. So we've got a super chat here um, nice. to, from Michael, um, Australian dollars seventy seven ninety nine. Thanks for the, the super chat, Michael. He's saying here, what a great win, Manly over Penrith. Uh, 32 to 18. It was a great win for Manly and a great win for the Warriors over South Sydney. Absolutely, it was. Um, yeah, look, Warriors um, definitely dominated South in that game. And uh, Penrith um, went down to Manly um, down there in um, Brookville Oval with Cherry Evans. Um, milestone game last week. How was that? Actually, you went you went to that game. How was it? Yeah, well, I guess like, the whole game was based in DCA, of course, because of that big yeah. milestone game. But yeah, look, he played really well, um, and I'm glad that we saw. I, I saw DC play live and get that win, so it was a really special uh, night in general. And um, look, he's a great player, been a long time uh, servant for Manly now. He's a legend, and um, yeah, it was just a beautiful moment to see him score too. It's even better. Yep, and a comment here from Mel. He, uh, Mel is saying, "Yeah, I'm a Kiwi born and bred, but when I lived in Australia in the late '90s until 2008, I was also a supporter of Manly, but obviously, mm-hmm. Wales was my number one team." Uh, should be a good entertaining game this week. So, yeah, mm. that, that's an interesting comment. And Mel saying, "Yeah, love, love Manly beating Penrith." I'm sure. I'm Me sure too. the neutrals would have would have loved it. You know, if you were someone who didn't doesn't hate Manly, but yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, looking at um, looking at your your team, um, the squad this year. Um, what 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 would you say would be um, like a general passment for you guys would be making the finals? Will you be happy with a top six finish? Or would you like to see your boys make the top four? Like, I feel like Manly have got a team more than capable of making the top four this year. Definitely, um, yeah. It all depends on a couple of players that they stay fit, like Tommy. Obviously, Tommy's been great having Tommy back on the field. It's been great to see him, you know, play string a few games together. Um, hopefully, that continues this year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, well, what do you what do you reckon, uh, Pro and Zay, What what do you thoughts there on that? You know your boys' chances, and where do you reckon they'll finish this year? Like on the ladder, the season. Yeah, uh, look, I think the expectations to make the top eight. Obviously, I think our team's yeah. too good to miss the eight uh, three years in a row because it's already been two years in a row we missed the finals, which is not good enough for our standards. Yeah. So, I think this is the year where the boys finally make the finals and do get back to um, you know finals arena. Top four would be a stretch, I reckon, but yep. one potential we should be a top four team if we play like how we did against Penrith every week. Um, I think top six finish. I think a top six finish is definitely where I, I, I see us finishing this year. I think top six is the pass mark for Seabs and the, and the team. Yeah, and do you reckon this is? Do you reckon Seabolt's under a bit of pressure this year, or or like if you don't make the finals this year, or, or what what is accepted for you know for for you for for Seabolt this season? Is it making the finals, or yeah? Obviously, there's a lot of coaches under the pressure this year, but. Um, I mean, we know Deep Dimitri's under a bit of pressure at the moment. So what what do you reckon? Yeah, I think with Seems, I think he needs to get the boys making finals. If we finish yeah. like ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, uh, around that sort of mark, I don't think we will. But if we did to, like, to miss finals just, 
Uh, I think he does keep his job, but I think he may yeah. be only given about five rounds into 2025 yeah. to keep his job. But I do think, though, he's doing a good enough job so far. He seems to really, um, you know, made some good changes to Manly. He seems to really, you know, improved this year's coaching, I feel like. And the boys are adapting to his style of, of, of coaching, too. You can see that, too, by the, the way we attack now and that. So um, I've got faith in him. I really do. I think it could be a good year for him, hopefully. Yep, and Mal is saying Mal, Manly look good this year, Todd Payton, I'm hoping. So, yeah. And um, what, what about a rookie, like a young player? You're looking, you know, there's quite a few good players there for Manly at the moment. Your squad's got great bit of um, depth there. Uh, who do you reckon, like a rookie to watch this year? Because, um, yeah, what, what do you reckon on that one? Like a rookie to watch, like a young player you, you're keeping an eye for, like play, people that need to keep an eye on for for the season, for the rest of the year? There is one. There is one I'm really keen on, and that's Jamie Humphreys. I know that there's a lot of um, talk about Gordon Chan come Tong, who's a great young hooker for us as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got you've got a couple of other young rookies there too who could really break into that Manly team one day, like Lehigh Hopewadi, who's the youngest Hopewadi, I believe, or one of the youngest in the family, who's a who's playing Blacktown for Blacktown at the moment in reserve grade. Um, but yeah, Jamie Humphreys, that's that's the kid I'm looking forward to the most. I think he's the future of Manly. I know at the moment uh, Lachlan Croker and Carl Lawton are both our Hookers, hookers uh, in the team, but I do think though one day Jamie Humphries will come into that mailing team and make a real mark. He's a great player, and I've watched him closely. And yeah, that's what yeah. I'm keen for. Yeah, I'm just got a comment here from uh, Michael again. Here, uh, he's seen great tries um, by uh, Millstone's career games, milestone games DC and 310 career games, and Corey Riddell's hundredth career game as well. So yeah, agree, yeah, 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 that's good. So um. Yeah, let's get into the game now. So this massive game on, on Saturday afternoon between the Manly Seagulls uh, and the uh, One and Warriors at Go Media Mount Smart Stadium. Game kicks off at 3 p.m. in Australia. So no daylight savings anymore. So we're back to the oh. Queensland, which is great. Um, thank God. So um, Queensland, New South Wales on the normal time. So 3 p.m. here in Australia, Eastern time. So um, as New Zealand, also daylight savings is finished as well. So it's a um, couple of hours Um but, yeah, this game, massive game. So we'll go through the team list. We'll have a look at the team list and um, yep. yeah, give our thoughts on the team list. So starting off with the uh, – we'll go with the Manly Seagulls team list first, the away side, um, Proenzo. So why don't you take yep. it away and go through the team list for Manly? No worries. So fullback Tom Trevojevic. The wingers are Tommy Saleo and Jackson Pulo. The centres are Tolly Cole and Ben Trevojevic players in the centres this week, replacing Ruben Garrick. Um, the halves are Luke Brooks and, and Daly Sherry Evans, the captain. The props are Paseca and Aloye up front with Hooker, Lock and Croker. The back rowers are Ola Kowatsu and Corey Waddell, who moves into the uh, starting side from the bench. And Lock, Jake Chivojevic. And the bench is Carl Lawden, Ethan Bullimore, who returns to the bench. And um, the rest is Toff Sipley and Nathan Brown with Jake Arthur, 18th man. Yep. Yeah. And uh, hello to CJ Moxley in the chat. Good to see you, bro. Hope you're doing well yourself. Um, and he's saying this is the... This is the game of the round, in my opinion. So we'll go through the Warriors. We'll go through the Warriors team. I'll go through the Warriors team, and we'll have a look at some of the other comments as well in the chat. So, uh, fullback is Chance Nickel Klukstad, CNK. Don't know what team he's a Lesniak returns um, onto the wing there. So um, a bit of a late scratching last week with an injury, but he's back. Uh, mm. Rocco Berry in the centres and um, RTS. Roger Tuvas, Sheik, Masala Montoy on the wing. Uh, Tamare Martin, 5'8", and Sean Johnson, halfback. Uh, Adam for Noah Blake prop and Wade Egan hooker. Mitchell Barney at the other prop and Jackson Ford in the second row with Kurt Capewell and uh, the captain of Lockers, Tohu Harris. Uh, the bench is Shana Harris, Tavita, Tom Ale, Jace Devung and Jacob Laban. And the reserves are Adam Pompey, Tane Toa Piki, Zion Ma'u, Edward Cozy and Ali Lawatoa. So that is the reserves okay. there. So that's the team. So we'll just go through some of these comments and I'll, I'll give you thoughts on the Manly team, uh, Proenza, and thoughts on the Warriors team here. So uh, we've got here, Jose, Manly is definitely uh, what I call one of our bogey teams here for sure. They have a great record against the Warriors. And Mel saying 5 p.m. for us here in New Zealand for the kickoff and the Warriors have been a very strong side. Uh, we've got CJ Moxley here, great matchups. Uh, Sean Johnson versus Dave Cherry Evans. We'll have to talk about that soon. And uh, Michael is saying, yeah, great lineup from both sides. So, what's your thoughts here on the um, Seagulls team, um, Proenza Vids? And, um, yeah, what is your thoughts on the Warriors team that they're lining up with? 
Yeah, with the mailing team, I like it. I think I think it's the best yeah. side of good names with who's available. Um, yeah, I guess the most notable changes are that Ruben Garrick's out with a concussion, yeah. so he's yeah. got a category one concussion, which means he misses eleven days, so he's unfortunately out for this Saturday. But replacing him is Ben Trevojevic, and I think after last week the way Ben played in the centres up against Taylor May on the yeah. other side, uh, his defence was awesome. I, I really rated that. But he's versing a much better opponent in RTS, so. I'm a bit worried, but I do trust Berber enough in the centres there. Um, and in the back row, yeah, I guess um, Wardell's starting, so it's a bit different, but Wardell played it fantastic too. And he's been a really underrated, underrated signing so far, so I do think he deserves a starting mm-hmm. spot. And Ethan Bullimore, who's obviously been, obviously been the unlucky man so far to miss out for the Manly team, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, he'll do a job as always. But overall, I think our team looks good. Our back five looks pretty dangerous with Turbo, who's playing... The Warriors for the first time in three years. Uh, wingers yeah. are Talao and Pulo, which I think both are solid wingers uh, at best. Uh, Cola is versus uh, Rocco Berry, which is a you know great matchup as well. So, yeah, and, and, yeah the halves, Murray Martin and Johnson versus Brooks and Cherry Evans. So, yeah, no, it's, it's you know, a good team by Manly. I do, I do rate it. And for the Warriors team, I'll get into the Warriors one now. Um, I, I like their team too. Their team's, look, I'll be honest, their team on paper is stronger than Manly's team, I think. I do think that. Because we're missing a few, but um, but yeah, look, I think the Warriors for me, their dangerous man is RTS. I think the way he's playing so far, he hasn't hasn't really missed a beat since he was last in the in the NRL. So yeah, we've got yeah. What to what to do to defend him. But um, your forwards are good with Noah Blake up front with Mitch Barnett. Them two are most underrated props pairing, in my opinion. Um, Wade Egan has been awesome. Uh, he's been great. You know, great, has had a great season so far. Uh, and then, yeah, look, I think overall, it's, the Warriors, for me, have always have had a really good balanced team. So it should be a, a good contest, you know, between both both sides. Yeah. Yeah. And just uh, my thoughts on the whole, the, the Manly team first. I think Manly's got a very uh, strong, strong side. Um, I like the looks of, um, you know, it's four pack there with uh, Paseca, LAA, and um, Ola Kuatu. I think Ola Kuatu is a, a player that. The Warriors are going to keep an eye out for, especially Jake Travoy, which we know what Jake Travoy, which brings to the Manly Seagulls team, his defence right. and his leadership. Um, you know, especially especially around the ruck area, um, Jake Travoy, which you know he defends very well in that area. So, I think also you know you talk about Corey Waddell as well. He's a pretty uh, has had a pretty good um, season so far as well for Manly as well. So, yeah, I just think that um, it's a very strong team that Manly have named. Um, the biggest blow for me is definitely Ruben Garrick. Um, I would be completely honest. I think Ruby Garrick is a massive out for you guys. Ben yeah. Travovich can definitely do the job there. I think he's, you know, he's a very talented player, and, and he's, you know, played pretty well for you guys this season so far. But I think having Ruben Garrick out is a massive out for you guys, especially as well as his goal kicking as well. You know, he brings a lot to, yeah. to, uh, to as well with that part of the game as well. So you know, like Tommy Travovich, man. What more can you say about the guy? You know, Tommy Travovich, um, very dangerous player. You know, the Warriors are going to have to be on their game to to watch out for Tommy, um, mm. especially. So, yeah, it's it's a, a very strong manly side, um, no doubt about it. I'm really um, you know, there are some um, players that I am a bit worried about, especially from you guys. Um, but um, but looking at the Warriors side of, the, of things now for the Warriors team, um, obviously having Dullins back is a huge in. Um, it's great he's he's back on on that wing there. Um, you know what he brings to the side, especially when he runs the ball. Uh, defensively as well, um, you know, he 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 puts in a lot of work for this team, D- Dullin, and um, yeah, obviously the um, the out of bit of news in regards to injuries, Bunty of Fowler, uh, Bunty yeah. of Fowler said to miss a couple of weeks, um, unfortunately, and that's going to test a bit of our depth in the forwards at the moment. So, um, look, I, I am very impressed with the, the depth that we've got at the moment. I'm very confident with the depth that we've got because. Uh, previous years, I probably wouldn't have said that, but um, you know, you can throw in any other player, young player in there. You got Jacob Laban um, coming off oh, the bench like there, him. yeah. And, and I thought he was very solid last week. It's good to see him retain his spot. Um, I'm not too sure how many minutes he'll play in this game um, because we've got Capewell, uh, Capewell back there, and you got Barnett forward. So I don't know how much minutes he'll get coming off the bench, but um, it's good to see him retain his spot there um, in this 17 as well. So. Yeah, look, overall stoked with the Warriors team. I'm very um very happy with the team we've named this week. Um Chanel off the bench as well. I like that. I really do am a fan of the Chanel Stavid off the bench. He can come on and play a bit of a 
bit of a roll there in the hooker spot if um you know if Egan needs a bit of a rest there. So yeah, generally speaking, man, it, it's a it's a very good Warriors team and, and I'm very happy with it overall. So um just just another thing looking at the key matchups now. So key matchups um for, for me probably over with Sean and um Cherry Evans. What what are your thoughts there uh, on that key matchup? And do you have another key matchup? For this game? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do, actually. But that yeah. DC and um, Sean Johnson matchup's huge. Like, both of them were both baby face in 2011 in that grand final. And now, you know, not not, 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 not going to say they're wearing out because both of them are playing fantastic footy at their ages. Both of them are yeah. aging like fine wine. And, yeah. And DC, DC is 35, but he's playing like a 24-year-old. Uh, same can be said for Sean Johnson, too. He's playing mm. some of the best footy that I've seen him play in a while as well. So that's a great matchup. I think that them two players will be key for both both sides. Um, but yeah, there's another matchup I'm keen for. And uh, it's one that I talked about on my um, Simply Eagle podcast last yep. night, too. That is uh, Taniela Paseca versus Adam Fanua Blake, the two um, Kong and Ford. That's a big battle, I think, uh, them two. Uh, Paseca's getting better and better game by game. And Fanua Blake's obviously a. You know, great leader as always, and great, great props. So, you know, keep that battle too, actually. Yeah, and AFP obviously coming up against Manly, um, up against former side there. Um, so, um, yeah. there might be some, some, some words exchanged. Who knows? Uh, you yeah, know. maybe. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think, I think most of the boys do like Phil Blake still after that, yeah. after that sort of departure. But if Matt Lodge was playing, I, you know, I think some words be said. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, it's it's another good battle there for Noah Blake and. Coming up, Paseca. I think Paseca is actually uh, a, a very talented player. Um, I reckon yeah. he does the job pretty well for you guys as well. And um, I see we've got the Wade Egan, um, Wade Egan up against uh, Lock and Croker. Um, mm. Lock and Croker is uh, pretty underrated for you guys um, in, in the side. And obviously, Wade Egan is having a great season. Um, you know, mm. he's for me, he's the informed hook at the moment. Um, um, yeah, I just think based on form. Based on form right now, is he's one of he's really up there and, and he's probably the informed hooker at the moment there. So yeah, just going through the chat here. So just Michael was saying yeah, DC is can play two more games to the Seagulls in 2026 and 2027. So yeah, well what do you thoughts there on that? What are your thoughts on that comment? Yeah, look he could. I think he really could actually. Um yep. depends whether he will go for that long, I guess. But because yeah. his contract ends up in 2025, so next year, but mm. He could. I mean, he's playing well enough to keep playing for as long as he wants to. So I, yeah. I, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't say why he wouldn't I give up. Yeah, and uh, obviously with Sean is the same. Whether he could go on another season next year, I think he can still do it. But it all depends mm, yeah. on you know how he feels. Like um, apparently last season he was close to you know having a lot. It was last year was very close to his final year, but he decided to carry on the season. So yeah, no, I think it's based on. Based on the way we played last year, and it seems like he enjoyed his footy again, and you know he um, was close to winning that Dally M last season, um, but um, he yeah, came up short against KP, which um, you know still. I got to say he was a big time big time Rob. Yeah. KP did not deserve that. Not not at nah. all. No. Nah. Yeah, exactly. But um, what do you reckon? You know, just looking at the the, the squad here. So I, I looked at the uh, team list here, and uh, you know your four pack. Um, I, I talked about the four. Going to talk about the four pack. We've got AFB, Tony Paseco, we've got Barnett there, um, LIA, and uh, Homoli Olakwaru. Warriors got Jackson Ford, Luke Capewell, uh, Tohu Harris, and, and Jake Travoy, which year. I think the four pack battle um, is pretty even. Yep. I think it's pretty even battle between the uh, two sides there. What are your thoughts there on that? Because um, I will say this completely honest. I'll be completely honest. I feel like our outside backs, we've got a better outside backs um, um, than you guys at yeah, the moment. So. That's just me being completely honest. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts here um, on that, Pronzo? Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think you're right with the outside backs, um, Mark. I think yeah. that I think the Warriors outside backs are probably a bit better than ours because if Ruben Garrick was there, I probably would be a bit more closer. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. think your centers are a bit more better than ours. But I think in the halves, the part that we win that battle with Brooks and um, Sherry Evans, but it's only, it's only because Luke Medcalf is out. That's the, that's the only reason why I guess I'll go mainly halves, but in that yeah. one. Um, in terms of the forwards, uh, it's very hard to split. I think, you know, maybe Warriors props are better than our props, but I do think, though, that, um, the rest of the team between both of them are very, very similar. I do think the, the fullback battle will, will be awesome between 
seeing K and Turbo, um, you know, them two going at each other will be awesome. Um, but look, look, I'll be honest with you, bro. Overall, both sides are very similar, I feel like. But I think they really are. Um, depends who turns up in the day, I think. Yeah, and I see um, Zion Martin has been named in the reserve. So who knows? Maybe there's a potential yeah. for a um, debut. Um, I know, saw last, yeah, saw last week um, against South. Um, um, Jacob Blavin was um, a, a, a bit of a, you know, a late um, inclusion into the side, and um, yeah, he awesome. made his debut there. So there may be a potential here for Zion Ma'u maybe to come onto the bench. Um, so yeah, you never know. I think there may be a chance there. I'm um, looking at the reserves there for for the Warriors, but just um, just look at the bench. What do you reckon on this bench here? So you guys have got Jake Trevojevic. Uh, you got sorry, you got Jake Arthur. Um, yep. there, and Aaron Woods, you got Brad Parker there. Um, so what? What actually? No, what? Wrong bench. Carl Lawton. Sorry, that was the reserves. Carl Lawton, yes. really the wrong one. Carl Lawton, Ethan Boyingwood, to force simply, and Nathan Brown. That's your bench. And we got yep. Shanaris Levine, Tom Arle, Jason and Jacob Blavin. So what are your thoughts here? What are your thoughts on on the bench? Who, who do you reckon's got got the better bench, or do you say it's pretty even there? Because I feel like the Warriors bench. Um, it's pretty solid for us. Um, yes. But what do you reckon on your bench? Yeah, I think our bench is pretty strong. I mean, Carl Baldwin's been a great Jersey 14 so far, coming off a lock and croak when he's tied. And I think, yeah, he's been a great 14 in general. Um, Bullimore, Sipley, Brown, that's great impact for us, I feel like. Uh, the way Brown played last week, if he plays, it, plays like that again against the Warriors, well, I think he'll be huge for us in, uh, on Saturday. Uh, Toff Sipley, yeah, look, I think Sips is, um, yeah, first his old club too. Uh, he's been really good now in the first two games, he's been back for Manly in, so I'm just happy Sipley have another big game as well. And Bullimore, yeah, look, I think Bullimore, you know, will do the job as always. Um, he's definitely solid. Uh, the Warriors bench is very mobile too, like ours, so yeah, I think there was a comment just before saying it's, it's even, which I do agree yeah. is. So, yeah, look, I think, um, you know, either bench you pick over, I think it's very similar. It's only by just. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what just uh what do you reckon um, you know, the keys to victory for, for Manly in this game? Like what 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 is the crucial thing that Manly need to do, like to, to go over to New Zealand and um, you know, get get the two points against um, the Warriors down there at um go medium outside stadium. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think um we need to I guess, try and be aggressive in the middle like we were against Penrith. I think the reason I think we struggled against the Dragons was because we tried to move the ball too early and try to play yeah. expansive footy. And I, and I know this year Manly are really big on moving the ball and really big on trying to score points early and trying to get the ball out to our outside backs, etc. But, no, we can't always do that. I think through the forwards we need to win. I think the Warriors have a great forward pack and so do we to compete with the Warriors pack. So I do think for the forwards, we're going to try and really match them there, be physical, be, you know, be neutral, I guess, and just, yeah, just do our job, really, do our job. Um, and, yeah, look, I think, yeah, that's just where I think we're mainly going for the forwards, but also for a kicking game too, because I know Sean Johnson's kicking game is really can give the Warriors much, like a lot of momentum um, as well. So mm. hopefully DC's kicking game is just as good, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, and... um. For, for me, obviously, the, the keys to victory for the Warriors is um, basically, you know, what we did last week, you know, the, the, the fact we, um, we we started that game off, we considered the first try against South, but I felt from there on that the Warriors just completely out, you know, worked South um, waiting, and especially what he brings in terms of that dummy half, you know, dummy half area, um, and Hooker, you know, he's, yeah, you know, his, his um, direction and attack is, is what the Warriors you know, always um, need, um, and that, that's what he provides, especially. And, um, yeah, like the likes of Sean Johnson there, you know, with his kicking game, controlling the game, um, you know, you have C and K there at the back there, um, RTS as well. Like, you know, the Warriors, um, it's basically, you know, defensively has been really good to start the season. Um, yeah, Warriors no. haven't considered a lot of points, and that is the key. Um to being a strong side throughout the year. Um, it is it's so important, and that's what helped the Warriors last year um, when they, you know, made that run to the top four and preliminary final against Brisbane. So I think it's pretty much the same, you know, defensively. Um, the Warriors have been great to start the season, and that's, um, that is the key for me. The attack will 
you know, work itself out, um, you know, but, um, you know, that, that attack last week was the best we've seen from the Warriors this season because, um, yeah, look, in, in majority of our games, the Warriors um, have had opportunities, but they, ha- they just haven't iced them. Um, and um, we did that against South. So if we can get a few opportunities and we ice those opportunities, um, it'll, it'll be hard for Manly, you know, to keep up with the Warriors in this one. So yeah, that's true. that's the key for me for the Warriors in this game. But um, just just looking at it, so basically um, the head-to-head stats, I'm going to look at the stats now for this one. So head-to-head... Um, Play 38 times and the Warriors have won um, 13. Manly won 25 in the last matches played there last season, uh, which the Warriors won 29 to 22. And it was a very close game as well. Yeah, and um, you guys at that point of the season, you know, you, you were slightly in the mathematical finals um, category um, there. But um, we won that one. It was a very tight one. So that was 2023. And um, 2022 was, look, not a great season for the Warriors, um, to put you honest there, but Manly won that pretty easily there, 44 to 12, then they um, looked well. So that was that was a complete smashing by um, Manly over the Warriors there. So um, looking at the wins there record, so the Warriors are 57% um, over Manly at um, Go Medium Mount Smart Stadium there, and Seals at 67%. Uh, the form guide here has the Warriors won over their last three straight games. Um, you guys have won three and lost two games. So, looking at that form guide and um, looking at the states, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think um, it's not that far off from each other. I think it's pretty even, the stats there. Um, I guess, um, yeah, our record at Mount Smart's pretty good. But I think overall, yeah. seems like as though the Warriors seem to have looked pretty good in terms of um, stats-wise and stuff like that. There's probably areas in our game where we could improve as well, like ball handling maybe is another thing I should probably mention as well in terms of mm. stats. But, um, yep. yeah, look, it's pretty similar, I think. Um, you know, Amelia Warriors have had some great games in the past. Like last year was a great game. And that was my first time going to New Zealand and watching the boys play in another country. Uh, we could have won that game. We definitely could have. But, yeah. uh, again, we just sort of lost our way. Um, but, yeah, look, in the past, Amelia Warriors have had some great games. I, I know that for sure. Like a lot of uh, goal and point games, uh, a lot of... Um, Blowout, uh, one from twelve games. So I'm expecting it to be a really another close game, like an nail biter. So uh, yeah, no, I think it's good. it's really even overall. Yep, and uh, Jose is saying you're plus thirty eight right now. Yeah, four and against has gone up after that win over South. So, um, which is which is huge as well. So uh, it's quite an important thing with us at the latter the end of the season. If you want to be sitting inside that top four, so yeah. Um, this game, look, uh, now to the prediction side of things. So just looking at it now. So, look, I think um, I, I'm pretty confident on, in, in um, the boys um, getting the result here. Obviously, going to back my team in here. So, Lorenzo, I'll ask you, uh, Pro NZ Vids, um, predictions-wise, uh, what, what do you reckon, like, a, a man of the match for you guys um, like who will stand out and a, a try scorer, any time try scorer, the first try scorer, and, um, yeah, a prediction for you in terms of the score? Okay, well, I guess I'll back my boys as always. I know going yep. to New Zealand will be a tough task, but I do think that the, the Manly team can bounce back and I guess, yeah, give up the momentum from last week, hopefully. And I know that will take a lot of lot of energy out of us that win against Penrith, but I do think we'll reset and go again for this game on Sunday. I'll go Manly, 30, 32 points to 24. I do believe we are, I do believe it'll be a high-scoring game. Uh, I do believe that completely. Uh, a lot of points in it. Um Anytime try scorer, I'll go with probably one for the Warriors. I'll go with Montoya scoring time. Um, and look, a first try scorer, I'll back him probably. Uh, I'll just go. I think I said I'll go Turbo because he scored nine tries in his last five games against the Warriors, which is crazy. So I'll back yeah, him well, Turbo yeah. there. Uh, and then, yeah, um, also man the, match, man the match prediction too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go uh, Luke Brooks. All right, yeah. Well, for me, I'm gonna go. Uh, try scores first. We'll say any time. We'll go with. Um, we'll go with Berry, Rocco Berry, and I'll go Marcelo Montoya. Nice. Um, for the Seagulls, I will probably say Cola. Yeah. Um, Cola the score there, um, and first try scorer will go. Ooh, We'll say, I'll go Dullin. Dullin. 
Um, I backed him last week, but he was ruled out. So we'll go with Dullin again this week. Um, he's hopefully huge. he's not ruled he's out. Huge. So Dullin, um, for me, for first try scorer, has a bit of a knack scoring tries as well. So DWZ for me. Um, man of the match. So if we we win the, we win this game, I'm going to say man of the match probably be... I'll go RTS. I'll go with Roger. I think Roger yeah. will have a big game. And uh, prediction score... Predict the score for me. I'm gonna say, oh, I'm gonna go Warriors 20, 28. Um, Manly Seagulls 16. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I'll go Manly Seagulls 16. I think you boys will, will start well, um, hang in there, and I think we'll do enough, you know, just to win the game, um, in that second half. So yeah, Warriors to do it. I think they will, will do it and then get the win there. So just going through the chat just real quickly, have a look at the comments before we get on out of here. So got Michael here saying I'm going mainly by 12 points, uh, 36 nice. to 12. Uh, Luke, um, and he's also saying I'm going Luke Brooks, man of the match. Nice. And uh, Michael's also saying, okay, I've already read that same comment. And uh, Broken Rupert is going Warriors 34 yeah. to 4. Wow. That will be a big score because that will be a repeat of the same score that the Warriors won against South um, last week. So yeah, yeah look, it's, it's um, been a great, great um, having you on, um, Pro Inso Vids. Um, no doubt about it. I'll get you on again at some point during the season. Um, yep. But it's been a joy. Um, thanks for coming on. Um, and um, yeah, really appreciate you. You know, giving your time up and coming on to to preview the Warriors Manly game and um. Yeah, have a safe travel to New Zealand. Enjoy the game um, over there. And, um, yeah, no doubt enjoy the atmosphere because um, that, that's, that's the big thing. The atmosphere is awesome. Yeah. It gave me a nice stadium. So enjoy it. Oh, uh, yeah. Cheers, bro. No, thanks for that. And, uh, yeah, no, I can't wait to go to New Zealand for the second time ever. It's going to be fun. And I know Wiles fans will out, um, outnumber us, but that's all right. I'm keen to go there either way. Um, yeah. And, yeah, no, it should be a good game. So may the best team win. And I'll see you next week for Manly Titans as well. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, those yeah. who don't know, um, I will be going uh, to to uh, a neutral winner again, Manly versus the Titans at, at CBOS next week. So I'll be seeing a Proenzo there at the game. And, um, yeah, we'll be watching the game as well. So it should be good. Um, but, yeah, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, Broken Rue is saying, join New Zealand, bro. Thank and um, Michael is saying here, it is my birthday as well today. So happy yeah. birthday there to Michael in the chat. And Mel is saying, yeah, thanks, boys. Up the was. Cheers, Mel. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone for tuning in and watching. And thanks to those who have interacted in the live chat as well. And um, make sure you go on and um, follow um, and uh, check out ProNzo Vids. Go and subscribe to his YouTube channel, ProNzo Vids, there. Um, and um, yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Like the video. Make sure you like the live video, like the live stream, and um, subscribe to this YouTube channel as well. And I will see you all in the next one. Enjoy the game. Up the wires. And, um, yeah, can't wait for Saturday. Have a good one. Good night. Good night. See ya. See you later.